fun up there in these big waters, catching big smallmouth. Hey guys, Seth Fighter, Bassmaster Elite Series record here. We're up in the North Country on the Great Lakes, chasing small Man, That was a light bite. Uh, we got a big cold front hit. Fishing's been a little tough or a little finicky. I'm gonna show you a few things I do with the tube to get you some bites when the fishing's a little tough. And just run you through my whole setup from rod, reel, line, knots, tube hooks, tubes, everything. We're gonna go over it all. We're also gonna talk about areas and types of places these fish get on at certain times of the year and stuff to look for when you're out on a new lake looking for smallmouth bass. All right guys, I'm gonna go over to the line I use to chase these big smallmouths. We're talking super clear water. I mean, some of the stuff we're fishing, you can literally count the zebra mussels in 30 feet of water on the rock. A lot of guys like to use just straight fluorocarbon on their uh, tube setups. I actually run braided line with a fluorocarbon leader. It does a couple things for me. I can cast a lot further with the braid versus fluorocarbon. It's going to be a lot more manageable throughout the day. I can get a lot better hook set at those really long Ooh. casts. I mean, if you got really stretchy fluorocarbon and don't get a good hook in on a fish way out at the end of the cast with a tube, he's going to come off as soon as he shakes his head or jumps. And uh, with that braid, I can throw it 20, at least 25% further and uh, it's instant hook set when I lift on them, punches that hook right through their head and they're in the boat no matter what. I guess we can go rigging the tube too while we're here. This little VMC Dominator tube jig, you get it wet, helps push up in there a little bit better. And a lot of, a lot in the spring I throw this little tube a lot, it's only a two and a half inch tube. They're up eating crawdads, um, eating really small minnows, everything's just small right now. The crawdads are small. So take that, you run it in the tube, push it up to the head, pop the line tie through the tip of the tube. Another little trick I'll do, um, well it makes your bait a little bit smaller, which I don't mind this time of year. The tube ends, they never get cut really well, they'll get stuck together, or the cut doesn't go all the way down to the ends of them. So I'll just take like the last quarter inch, pinch it off, and you're done with it. That way uh, when they get doubled up, they seem to like wrap over your tube hook and won't come off. So just ripping them ends off helps a little bit. As far as tube colors, like green pumpkin, and then smoke is pretty much some variation of that's what I'm gonna throw nine times out of 10. If they're up eating crawdads, it's green pumpkin, copper's a really good color. If they're on some kind of minnows, uh, smoke purple's a good color, but real basic stuff with this, you don't gotta get too crazy with your colors. One key thing about tube fishing is, I always try to fish the lightest tube I can get away with. Um, like right now, we're, kept, we're fishing fairly shallow and it's not super windy. We're fishing 10 foot or less, um, fairly calm conditions. I'm actually throwing an eighth ounce tube. Um, a lot of guys will throw a quarter, three eighths and that kind of stuff. The key to getting bit today was when you tightened up on a rock to pop off, and those fish would just grab it out of reaction. And I think when you use a heavier tube, you don't get quite as much arc at the top of your pop and it falls a lot faster. So. You're kind of shortening up the period where you could actually get that reaction bite. Where I think the lighter tube kind of shoots up a little bit higher and kind of flutters down slower. So that, uh, I mean, it's still like a split second deal, but it's probably twice as long with a lighter tube than a heavier tube. But at the same time, you have to maintain bottom contact. You got to be able to feel what you're fishing. So you're going to have to go heavier at certain times, deeper water, heavier winds, heavier current, stuff like that. So keep a wide variety of tubes all the way from a sixteenth up to as much of an ounce. We're up here fishing the Great Lakes for smallmouth right now. Fishing a tube today. It's a really great way to catch smallmouth bass anywhere in the country. It just uh, it represents a lot of the stuff they feed on, crawdads, gobies, even some minnow stuff to get some smoke color stuff. A lot of this fishing is done with spinning tackle. It's a necessity to catch these fish up here. We're using light line, small baits, and gin clear water. Making a super long cast is the key to getting bit here. The further you can cast, the more bass you'll catch in a day, guaranteed. We're doing a lot of fishing with six and eight pound tests just due to the clarity of the water. Uh, you're gonna get a lot more bites fishing light line. You can catch fish with heavier line, but hands down, you're gonna get more bites Ooh. and bigger bites, I feel like, with lighter line. 
There he is. And uh, the spinning tackle is really the only way to fish oh, that. Screaming. These drags on these Daiwas are so buttery smooth, they allow you to fish lighter line than we have been able to in the past. You know, even getting down to four pound test was kind of sketchy at some times, but the drags are so smooth in these Daiwa spinning reels, it can keep up with that quick takeoff of a fish and keep you from breaking off your line. The reel I use for all my spinning tackle fishing, tubes, whatever it may be, is a Daiwa Ballistic 3000. I see a lot of guys using that 2000, 2500 size. And they're nice, they're light, but that 3000 is gonna do a few things for you. First of all, it has a larger diameter spool. That's gonna manage your line a thousand times better. You'll be able to make longer casts with that too. And this drag, the surface area of the drag is a lot larger on a bigger reel, so you get a smoother drag out of the deal. Like I said, I see a lot of guys using the 2000, 2500 sizes, but uh, your spinning fishing, spinning tackle fishing will be a lot more productive with a 3000 size reel. Just less, less twists in your line, less memory, longer casts, and a better drag. The areas where you want to look for in the spring, um, any of these bays off of the main lake is where all the fish are going to do their spawning. So there's a big rush of fish coming to these little bays. You know, in the summer, they're going to be spread out on all these little humps and islands and main lake points and stuff chasing bait. But uh, in the spring to spawn, they got to they gotta come into these shallow bays. And they load up on these uh, little points and humps inside of the bay and get fat and eat really good before they go up and lay their eggs. The main deal up here really is the wind. The wind's going to tell you exactly where they are each day. Um, it moves the surface temp around. So like right now we got the wind blowing into this point we're fishing. If we were to, then the water's 55 degrees right here and this is the main lake. That water's blowing out of this bay up against this point. So all the warm water in this bay is pushed up here right now. And that's where your fish are gonna be that given day. Now if the wind switches and comes out of, you know, the opposite direction, the fish are gonna be down on that bank. But right now I guarantee you that water down there is five, six degrees colder just across the bay than it is right here on this point. As far as cover goes, it's really gonna depend on the section of the lake you're in. This area of the lake we're in is a lot of sand and rock, and basically where those transitions are are gonna be your better areas. If it's all rock, you know, the little sand spots in there will be key. If it's all sand, the little rock piles will be the key spots there. It, you're just looking for change, really. That, that just goes in fishing in general, I mean. Little depth changes too. A lot of these big flat points, there'll be like one little spot where it comes up real sharp, three, four feet, you might not notice it but that's gonna be a really key spot where a lot of fish are gonna hold on that point. When you're fishing a tube, you're gonna get hung up a lot. You got an exposed hook, we're fishing rocks, and smallmouth, you're gonna get hung up a lot. I got kind of a three-step process of getting unhung. The first, I'll kind of just pop my rod, to see if it'll just come out free, you know? A lot of times it'll pop over, it's a real good time to get a bite. If that doesn't work, I'm doing the old snap. And there, come loose. Now, if the snap doesn't work, I just give it a good hard jerk. I mean, you're hung, you're either gonna break off or the tube's gonna pop out. And a lot of times, see, look at this. I just got my bait hung in a bunch of zebra mussels. And uh, that's the time when you go to just pull real hard, you'll end up ripping the zebra mussels off the rock. Roll back and good to go. Another little tip for you, when using spinning tackle, I know a lot of guys don't use it because they claim they get wind knots in them. One thing I always do every time I make a cast, when I throw it out there, let the line out, click the bail over by hand, and make sure that line's going through that line roller. That'll prevent every wind knot you've ever had. What happens is, you'll go to make a cast, and your line will get caught on top of your spool like that, and then when you go to reel it, you'll have that loop pinned in there. And then when you go to make your next cast, when it comes off, that'll actually create your wind knot. So if you just take a second just to make sure that line's in that line roller, when you start every cast, you'll never have another wind knot again. The rod I use for tube fishing is real important too. This is a seven foot heavy action Daiwa Steez with the AGS guides. These are by far the most sensitive guides on the market. I, use a, I actually use a heavy action rod. You might think that'd be a little stiff for tube fishing, but a lot of times we're fishing this in really deep water. I'm making really long casts. A lot of the times when you're pulling a tube, it's a, you get a reaction bite out of it. You know, When you come to pop over a rock, you get caught high sticking is what I call it. You'll get the bite, but you're way up here. And because it's a reaction bite of that tube yeah. popping over the rock, they'll grab it and spit it really quick. And when it's a reaction bite, they don't really eat it good. They don't, it's not like when they're feeding, they'll grab it and swim off with it. But when uh, you get the reaction bites, they just kind of pop it and spit it out right away. Where with that heavy action rod, if I hit one way, or if I get a bite way up here, 
All I gotta do is lean back and start cranking and that hook will penetrate with the stiffness of the rod and the slow stretch of the braid. The other really cool thing about this rod, which separates it from every other rod ever made, are these AGS guides, or carbon fiber guides. They're super rigid and durable, but the, the flex, they don't flex at all, makes them so much more sensitive. I'm not kidding you, especially with this tube fishing, a lot of fish will like nip your tube and drop it right away. I know for a fact I was never feeling some of those bites I was getting, especially on those windy days with a big bow in your line. The weight of them is incredible. This is by far the lightest rod I've ever held. This whole set of guides on this rod from tip to the end weighs less than this single guide on any other spinning rod on the market. The wind's picking up a little more too now. That's really a critical deal, especially fishing in super clear water. That wind makes those fish a little more active. We got hit with a, a major cold front last night. We had frost on the boat cover when we got up. The fish are in such an inactive mood right now. They're super tight to the bottom. Dragging a really light tube really slow across like every single rock you can feel is about the best way to get bit right now. And that's where the sensitivity in your rod and your line come into the factor. Um, like I said, the bites are really light to begin with and now you mix some wind in there, now you got a little bow in your line and everything's just getting harder and harder to feel. So uh, having the most sensitive rod you can get will definitely land you more fish. High vis braid's a big deal too. Even though I got a bow in my line, I can still watch that line. And if I see any little tick or jump in that deal, I know I got a bite and I can reel down and whack them. Got a little windier on us. To, oh, you see him jump? He's way out there. Got a little windier on us now. And like I said before, it, when you got a bow in your line, you're trying to fish a little eighth ounce tube out here in the wind and the waves, and it's rolling. Another big jump, man. This is fun. Uh, the sensitivity is. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm catching fish that I didn't even know bit my bait before. With them AGS guides on there, it's so sensitive. Even with a big bow in my line, I can still feel that little tick in this heavy wind. And I mean, that's really key to landing a lot more fish. You only get so much time on the water, it's, you want to make it count. Another big one. Oh. oh. There he is. Look at that beauty. Another lighter colored one. He might have been sitting on a little sand patch or. Maybe it was just his mood he was in, but that was just a beautiful fish. I said that water's getting a little warmer. They're starting to jump for us now. I like they put on a show for you when you catch one. Big, beautiful smallmouth. There's another one. They're loaded on this point. Oh, that's a big one, too. It's a big fish. Man, this is so much fun. Up here in this big water, big waves, catching big smallmouth. You can tell he's a big one, he's just dead weight. Oh. Love catching these big smallmouth on his light line, spinning tackle. Yeah, that's a big one. Coming up, jump. Oh. <laughs> Look at them down there, they're so pretty in that clear water. Shaking that head. Oh. There he is. A little more dandy. I think they're biting so good, we're gonna make a cameraman put it down and catch a couple. Big, beautiful, small mouth. Love it. Dragging that tube. Let him go. Hey guys, Seth Fighter, Bassmaster Elite Series rookie with you again today. I uh, had an awesome day. Love fishing the big water. Caught a bunch of big smallies. My hands are bleeding, so I'm going in. I can't, my hands can't take it anymore. Caught a pile of fish, a bunch of nice ones on the old tube, eh? It was a good time, man. I hope you guys learned something, something you can use in the future. It's a really great way to catch fish. 
especially small mouse. It works really good on large mouse too, but that little tube, there's something about it, man. It just flat out catches.